Okay guys, this next topic, um, I always like talking about this. Uh, we're gonna kinda categorize when to punch versus when to block, or when to counter punch versus when to counter block, or when to send a message and give them one of these versus just surrender and say, hey, you know what, maybe, maybe I'm not comfortable going head to head, so I'm gonna block. Um, so I think there's, there's uh, you know, conditions and it's a little situational, mm -hmm. right? Um, it's a little situational in a sense of, um, you, should, you should obviously know who's in front of you, right? If somebody speeds up and you're comfortable going head to head, meaning you're, you're you know, winning a high percentage of the volley exchanges, uh, it makes sense if you see the speed up coming to punch back and, 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 and send, a, send a message back. Um, if you're in a position where maybe you're not comfortable going head to head, uh, maybe you don't see the speed up coming, maybe you get jammed, uh, you know, any of those things, I would always be looking to block back. Understand the situation, understand, I guess, what sort of ball is coming at you, and then choose the right method. Yeah, I think the other thing to go with that, and, and some of the drills that we're gonna roll out will kind of help visualize that, but it's court positioning, too. Um, we wanna be a little bit careful to counter punch if we're extremely out of position, and our opponent is right on the kitchen line. Um, so we normally wanna counter punch if our positioning is pretty good, or if we're able to really get a full cut at the ball. But in general, like Tyson said, a good way to think of it is if you see it coming and you feel confident to go head to head with someone, go ahead and counter punch. I think that sends the strongest message. But if you don't see it coming, if you're a little fooled, uh, trust the fact that if you just play a decent block that you can get back to neutral and win a lot of those points still. So Kyle, if they're not able to tick all the boxes with being stable and in the right location and in the yellow zone, should they be fighting fire and punching back? No, no, you Very wanna good. trust the process, keep your error count down, force your opponents to play more balls, and, and yeah, you wanna be in an offensive position to do an offensive shot, right. and the offensive shot in this instance is that counter punch ball. Right, plain and simple, there's no need to ever be offensive back if you're not stable in the right location and the ball is in yellow or higher. First drill here. Uh, Coach Kyle is going to be the student, I would be the teacher. As a teacher, I'm speeding up. As a student, he's going to um, alternate both the block and the punch. But I'm going to tell him uh, that, that basically I'm going to hit two dinks. After my two dinks, I'm always going to be speeding up. So it's going to be two dinks and then speed up. So he knows when the speed up is coming. And then he's going to alternate a punch and a block from that. Okay, first drill here, dinking back and forth. He knows that I'm gonna hit two dinks. One, two, here comes a speed up. Beautiful, there's a block, same thing. There's one, there's two, here comes a speed up. Beautiful, okay? So this just kinda you know, gives you an idea on uh, you know, when, when the ball is coming, um, alternate both the block and the punch. And, and as you can see there, look at the added extension on the punch versus the, the block is a bit more by his body. Same thing here, two balls, one, there's two, I'm speeding up, nice block, very good, again, 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 here we go. Okay, there's one, there's two, speed up. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Sitting on the forehand this time. <laughs> uh, changing rolls. Okay, change okay, rolls. Here we go, uh, two balls. Okay, so changing rolls, Tyson knows it on this third one. I'm gonna be speeding up. He doesn't know where it's gonna go, very nice. Pausing at the point of contact. This one. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Here sorry. we go. We'll do okay, two. Go. Yeah. One more dink. Here we go. This is my speed up. Ooh, look out. Uh, there it is. Bring the wrist through. Bring the wrist. I like it. I like it. Kind of the last uh, last drill. We can make it a little bit competitive, get the, get the juices flowing. Um, Tyson's going to be the teacher. The role that he's going to play is aggressive no matter what type of ball he's dealing with. So he's the, the tennis player that wants to drive everything and hit through you every time, okay? With me being the student, I'm gonna start out, I'm gonna be in transition, and I'm gonna practice being able to block and reset from here and show good discipline to not speed up because I'm out of position now. Once I play a good block where I'm able to get some space forward, if I see Tyson leaning down, whether off the bounce or out of the air, that's my license to gain some space forward. If on that next ball, he decides to hit through me again after my positioning has improved, now I have license to counter punch, right? So I don't have to make it all the way perfectly to this kitchen line to be able to throw a counter punch ball in. I just wanna resist counter punching from back here where all the power behind my shot is taken away by all the time that he has to react to it. Right. So discipline here with the block. Once I play a good one, work my way in, 
get that pa get that paddle back and cocked and look to counter punch right. and use his pace against and it. The, and the only uh, way he is counter punching off his block is is when his weight's coming forward. If, if he were to block and then work his way in and he's off balance, it's probably not a good time to be counter punching, correct? Right. So keep the theme up. Breakdown. After you block, you're in, you're crashing, your weight's going forward. Just be alert and be ready to fight fire, I guess. Right, right. right. So go. Tyson's gonna go ahead and feed to me. If I play a block that's too high, haven't lost anything yet. I'm just gonna stay where I'm at, wait for myself to play a pretty good one, then that'll be my license to come in. Okay. And I can go at your feet too, correct? You can go at my feet, you just be Perfect. aggressive the whole time. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. I like it. Like pretty it. decent. Pretty yeah. decent. Uh, uh, uh. Oh. <laughs> it was out, right? <laughs> good gosh. <laughs> Here we go. Uh, yeah, find it. Find oh, it. Here we go. Very good. Okay. Ready here. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh, little premature uh, ejaculation little premature from attack. me there. Okay, change rolls here. Same thing here. Go ahead. Hey. Yeah, very nice. Good stuff. Good stuff, though. Here we go. Hey. Hey. Ooh, too good. Nice. Too good. That ball gets on me so fast when he's able to, to alternate, right? So you have a tendency when you execute this really well, your opponents feel like they're expecting that block every time. To be able to go from one to the next really increases the, the power and, and surprise factor yeah. for, for your opponents. And, and I think there's something to be said here, too. If Kyle knows that I'm only gonna block and I'm not gonna send a message or I'm not gonna ever speed up from here, it doesn't put any pressure on his fourth or his sixth or, the, or, or his eighth. So I've, even though I may not be comfortable from here, every now and then just sending a message that you're looking to swing puts pressure on their fourth, puts pressure on their sixth, but just shows them a, a much different look. And the big thing too is, there's, in my opinion, there's kind of this imaginary area right where you're not all the way at the line but if i've played a successful block from here i've got some forward momentum yes i haven't made it all the way to the kitchen but if i can get my momentum into this shot keep it very compact it's going to get on tyson in a hurry and i'm going to win a high percentage of those points okay guys this was a fun little topic here uh we uh kind of demonstrated some drills recognizing when to punch versus when to block um, we talked about some of the common tendencies, talked about some level specific insight, you know, within the, the drills. Um, one thing that I really want you to focus on is, is understanding your role, you know, understanding when to punch versus when to block. Um, you know, we're only going to punch back when we're in some sort of a offensive location or we see it early or we're super balanced or we're crazy alert you know what i mean so uh, i guess uh if any of those things are taking place take advantage of the punch uh it puts puts a lot of pressure on them uh if you're in a position where maybe you're off balance you're you're scrambling the ball gets on you quick maybe they disguise their speed up you don't see it great time to block so i think it's just being disciplined and and being educated in the, in the sense of, of of recognizing that uh off balance means block balanced seeing it early means means punch so to recap the drills guys um starting out the most simple one that we did is a uh, very cooperative dinking back and forth the teacher uh, is going to be doing a speed up the student knows when that speed up is going to be coming and they're going to alternate between uh, trusting that block and the close contact point or, or working on that counter punch and then uh, dialing up a notch uh, the second drill with the block and cock drill um, we start with the student in the transition zone teacher is at the kitchen line trying to be as aggressive as they can regardless of what ball they're getting and the student is waiting to hit a successful block gaining some space forward and then if they see that same uh, speed up coming they counter punch on the next ball when their positioning is a little better and they're in a better offensive spot. Awesome. So guys, keep in mind as you're doing these drills here, make sure you're cooperative, make sure you're making each other better. Uh, make sure too that you're staying within the, the main skill of the common tendency. Um, as far as technique, focus on some of the nuggets that made sense to you. Hope you guys like these drills. All right guys, uh, the game that we're going to show you here, um, 
it's going to be wrapped around punching and blocking, um, or I, 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 I guess more so from a counterattacking standpoint, um, gauging how much time you have and then categorizing if you should punch back or if you should block back. Um, the drill is going to be wrapped around um, one side that's speeding up, and then the other side would be counterattacking. Yeah, I think one of the things uh, teaching with you, Tyson, uh, that I learned, I think it's a really great way that you explain it is, if you see the attack coming, your default should usually be to counterattack. So you want to beat your opponents with a little bit of aggression if they're trying to bring that on you. But if you're not seeing the, uh, the attack coming in time, you've got a little bit more time to block and try to get back to neutral. So just something to think about as to when we do each option. Yeah, I, I, I think too, I mean, even, and I think this is where like you, you probably go against your ways a little bit. If you're not comfortable going head to head sure. with your opponent, if you're not comfortable going to head to head and you see the speed up, I, I think it's a great time to, to block back. Recognize that if you've lost hand speed battles time yeah. and time again, don't keep going down the same path. Don't keep losing the same way. If you're not comfortable going head to head with your opponent um, and you see them speeding up, I would, I would go to a block. Okay, guys, uh, the game here, Coach Kyle is going to be, it's gonna be um, He's going to be attacking, I would be counterattacking. He can be attacking off a ball out of the ear or off a ball off the bounce. Main focus for him is sly. Main focus for me is recognizing how much time I have and then choosing whether to punch or to block. Okay, ready here. Yeah, very good. Here we go, zero one. Okay, very good. Once. Here we go. Yeah, one. And I'm waiting. Uh-huh. No! Oh, he was there for it, though. <laughs> Okay, I want two. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice, nice. He's in the net. Yep. He's focused on speeding up. Obviously, he's keeping in mind, uh, you know, stable location, yellow zone. Great job for me to really work on countering. I like doing these situational base games. Um, it's because my, primarily, uh, my primary focus is only on countering, right? After we play a game to 11, then we change roles. His primary focus would be on speeding up and then you change roles. So it's nice to have one specific idea, yeah. you know, um, in this type of setting. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think if you saw how long some of those uh, dink rallies went, I'm really just focused on waiting for the right ball to attack. And then once I attack, my mindset is thinking about the spots where I know my opponent might be vulnerable, right? But I would say the most important thing is really looking for the conditions with that sly of waiting for the right ball to go ahead and choose that calculated speed up.